You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. Just slightly. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show. What up? What up? What up? What's going on, man? How was your weekend? No, it was pretty good. Um, You know, I had the heart attack over the weekend, you know, watching the Chiefs game. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a heart attack, too, but mine was a full one and no, no recovery. Um, But you're right. We'll get to that later. So since the last time we talked, WNBA player Brittany Griner is back on American soil. She was swapped for uh, Victor, I forget what his name is, the arms dealer from Russia, the merchant of death. You know, it's amazing how people use that title since it's been used in movies. But um what do you think about this whole prisoner swap thing? I might have the un uh what's the word I'm looking for? The unpopular opinion? That's it. That's it. That's the most fun. I mean, I don't necessarily I'm happy first of all, let me start off by saying that what happened to her being detained for her minuscule amount of liquid weed, basically, in a vape pen. Yeah. I don't agree with how Russia handled it, although Russia did it as a political chess move to begin with. I'm happy that she's home. I'm happy for her and her family because she didn't deserve to be held up over there. That being said, I don't necessarily agree with her being traded for John Wick. I'm just saying. I, I don't think that 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 that's uh, a good idea. But I'm pretty sure that when Russia did it or kept her, that was their end goal to begin with. Um. Yeah. I mean, she's not a veteran. She didn't need to be over there in a POW camp, so to speak. But do stupid things, win stupid prizes, I guess. My take on it is, you know the old phrase, when in Rome, if such substances are illegal in Russia, don't take such substances. And that's proof that no matter how big of an athlete you are or artist or whatever, when you're on foreign soil, it can happen to you. Oh, yeah. American rules don't apply when you're not in America. <laughs> exactly. Now, like I you, have I'm heard happy that... that she is home. Mm-hmm. But it's got, if it doesn't weigh on her, it's got to weigh on somebody. If this arms dealer is responsible for, say, another 100 or 100,000 lives being taken in the next few years, how does that play into this? You mean from a view from her viewpoint or just yeah. in general? I'm gonna be honest, she probably doesn't really care much. She's home. Yeah. You know? Um did you really know about the dude that, that they swapped never, with? Before never heard this of him week, until this really? came up. Right. So now I will say this too, and I'm not <laughs> trying to be harsh. If he doesn't sell something to somebody that caused something someone else will because if if it's arms that somebody wants an army wants or a group of individuals they will get it regardless of who they get it from true that i i find it oddly suspicious that they get this guy out in the middle of a war with ukraine <laughs> i mean you know what i'm saying yeah oddly oddly suspicious but you know they need to hook up on some ammo, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Ukraine's put up a bigger fight than they thought, I guess. 
Yeah, I guess uh, the Russians, from what I hear, they shoot like stormtroopers. <laughs> That's a good one. I know I admire that Ukrainian president who's out there fighting on the battlefield. The balls. That's yeah, the brass that's, balls award for 2022, right there. Yeah, that's that's pretty dope. I mean, could you see Biden? No, no. Let me see your war face. <laughs> I yeah, don't let me get started on American political people because I I can't see any of them on the front lines. Now I do say I do think that this particular decision that America did will come back and bite them in the hindquarters within the next ten years. I, I can't I can't tell you you're wrong because I kind of sort of agree with you. I don't know if it's 10 years. It could be two years. It could be 20 years. But yeah, yeah. it's coming. I think in the next it's coming. decade, it's, it's gonna, there's going to be. Obviously, we, we, we're we not on. Uh, we're not seeing eye to eye with Russia right now anyway. Or, you know, Biden and Putin. Wink, uh, wink, because, you know, Putin's guy is no longer in office. True that, but I, I yeah, I digress. Uh, a whole another show, folks. But I guarantee you that if Trump was still in office, that chick would still be in Russia. Yeah, yeah, and you know he'd have he'd have something to say about that. And again, I'm not even going to open that can of worms. Um, we'll save that for. A possible election or in, in two years, in two years, when the presidential election is up, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Yeah, cause we'll, there'll be a whole boatload of stuff to talk about. <laughs> now, switching from the national front, what the fuck is wrong with the world? I saw an article parents who say their kids won't eat or shower because they're addicted to Fortnite. And they slam Epic Games with the lawsuit. So I see a couple things wrong with this. First, as a parent, you need to make little Johnny's ass get off the game and go take a shower or go eat. And that would be the end of it. Second, you got no business suing a game company because a kid plays a game. How does that work in a court of law? Your Honor, my kid was playing that game, but didn't they sell him the game so it could be played? Yes, but he plays it. I can't get him to stop. Aren't you the parent? Yes, but I can't get him to stop. Case dismissed. Get out of my courtroom. That's how it would play if, out if I were the judge. If it were only that easy, because you're you're using completely 100% logic in that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That's not how America is based. I just for I just remembered. You're right. Didn't somebody sue for hot coffee because it was hot? Hey, that's exactly where I was going for. Somebody sued McDonald's and won because of a hot cup of coffee. So, mm -hmm. you know, my first question when I read this topic that is, first of all, how old are these parents? You know, 20s, early 30s, you know, still Two youngins. Years. Yeah. Who want to be friends with their kids instead of their parents. Don't call I see me a lot daddy, of that in the younger. Ricky. Yeah, I see a lot of that in the younger generation, you know, and to each his own. I'm not here to condemn nor promote that way, but I know how I was raised. <laughs> And I guarantee you that if uh, I decided not to eat or or shower or whatever, whatever game system I was playing would have been crushed by a hammer. I'm just saying. So that we wouldn't have that issue anymore. You are you 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 are almost 100 percent on. The only thing I disagree with, I am going to put my two cents into this because. And I don't mean to offend. If you're a parent out there and you're offended by what I'm about to say, you're part of the problem. Your kids are not your friends. 
You know, there's a reason why there are certain rules in society. Um, Take the military, for example. You can't frat or frat. I can't say the word. Can't mess with somebody of the opposite sex uh, publicly (laughs) if uh, they are your subordinate. If she's a cadet and you're a general, that's not a good look. Um, that's why they have rules in place. Is that only in public? Well, it can't be in private either. If it's found out, there could be a court. Well, you martial. said it in public, so I'm I'm just checking the rules. I'm I'm just covering all all <laughs> all the people that are watching right now that are in the military that are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know about it. I'm just saying if. That happens, you know. You could you could be subject to heavy heavy penalties. Uh, that's why teachers do not have relationships with students. They are your subordinate. They're not your friends. Um, shouldn't have relationships yeah, shouldn't, with students. Shouldn't. There's yeah, plenty that, out there that have. There are, and that is that is sad. It, it is. Um, Minor disclosure: Where the hell were those teachers when I was in school? Right. I didn't get the hot 20-year-old teacher. I got Miss Johnson and her old ass bumpy corn legs. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, back to where I'm at. Um, They're not your friends. They're your sons and daughters. And it's okay. It is absolutely okay to discipline your child. I'm not saying go upside little Jimmy's head. I'm I'm not advocating abuse. But you can damn sure unplug the TV. You can damn sure take the batteries out of the portable Nintendo 64 or whatever them things are that the young folk have. I call it a 64. That's an actual console. But you know what I mean. Um, like you said, the hammer. I wouldn't have it. I'm just saying. I, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> it would, the, the, the device would be gone. Mm-hmm. This issue would never happen again because I wouldn't have the device. <laughs> so my I would mama, come to dinner and I would wash my ass. I'm just saying that would be the that would be the solution. My mama would have just gave me the look. That's all I need to know. Let me uh turn this thing off and get my ass in the shower. Let me turn this thing off. Be at the table on time. Fork in hand. First of all, I can't imagine being in a mindset where I don't want to take a shower. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> that's the first. That that's that's just it for me. In, in but show, uh, I'm on level four. I'm on level four. That's why they got a. I ain't got time button. to clean my closet. Exactly. Bitch and go wash your ass. I'm. I'm. I would tell my kid if you made it to level four today, you can do it tomorrow. Get your ass in the tub. Um, <laughs> you want to make it to level five? Go wash your ass. Just saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we switch subjects, this is the question that I'm throwing out to everybody watching, you know, leave a comment. How would you deal with it if it's your child? I'll take on any and every answer because I I, I, I want I want to hear all the creative answers that are going to come this way. I want to know. Will you go upside the head? Will you let them do what they do? Please, please don't say that because... Again, you're part of the problem. So, bro, what we all knew already has happened again. Tom Brady got caught cheating. This time, he wasn't cheating on uh, on the against the other team. He was cheating against his own team. And uh, I've got an article here. Uh, Tom Brady tweaks the uh, coach's plays. Now, it's not cheating in the same vein as, you know, deflation of balls or the tuck rule, which now isn't a rule in the NFL. No wonder. I'm still hurt about that. Um, It says here that Brady's level of influence comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, includes holding court, with the offensive skill position players. So this would be your wide receivers and your running backs. And just in a nutshell, Brady behind the coach's back has tweaked some of the plays to his liking. 
And when a coach calls a play and he believes that he's going to get that play, Brady's already worked it out with his receivers and or running backs to do something completely different. Now, that didn't sit too well with the offensive coordinator. And let me just say this. I know Brady's got accomplishments. I'm not going to try to downplay that. He is a great quarterback. It hurt me to say it. I, I think a little piece of my heart just fell off, but it is what it is. But at the same time, we were just talking about people in positions of power and their subordinates. Yes, you might be the greatest quarterback ever, but you're still the quarterback. That man over there is the coach. Run that play. Now, before I turn it over to you, show, I'm just going to say this. If Tampa Bay is 13-3, and three, this isn't even an issue. Grady just knew what to call. He calls great plays. But they're not. They suck this year. And that's got to play into it. What do you think? My first question is, what's your source? Where did this article come from? This article came from. Bucks Wire. I imagine they would know better than anybody. They're the they're the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, news agency or whatever. OK. So the Bucks wire works for the Bucks, right? Yes. Oh, I don't know if they work for the Bucks. They just might be independent, yeah. but they're um, giving public stuff on the Bucks. So did, so did this behavior of Tom just start this year? I know for a fact it didn't. I mean, I'm just saying. They won a Super Bowl two years ago. Was Tom doing it then? Probably. I'm pretty sure he so was doing it still in New England. So what's the problem? They're, they sh the it's not working this year. Yeah. It's not working this year, but what's the problem? If the coaches really had a problem with him doing that, why are you playing him? I'm wondering if that has anything to do with Bruce Arians just deciding, you know what, I'm going to retire. I'm going to move up to the front office. I say he hasn't retired. He's still right there with the team. But he didn't have that day-to-day -day headache of having to, you know, manage the guy. I mean. Maybe. I'm speculating. I mean. I mean, yes and no. I mean, you're probably right. But, I mean, really, what's the problem? I, if Mahomes did the same thing, I wouldn't be upset. And, again, like I said, they're 13-3. and three? Man, I mean, that's even smart. if they're what six and seven or seven, what are they? Six and seven, seven, something and six, like that. Whatever. Something like that. I, I, I don't mean, know the 500 record. team, who cares? I mean, even if he does do it, he's in the middle, he, he's the one direct orchestrating the offense, you know what I mean? And you know, are we true? Is it true that okay, the the coach calls a certain play and the route's supposed to run? eight yards and then run to the post is Tom making it go nine yards into the post or is it going to be a square is he completely changing the route altogether when the coach calls a play is when I say what the play is it's a completely different play but with the same name I mean really what is the problem I think that you hit it on the head you know just like I had said earlier it's the record I, I don't think this would have been an issue with a better record I think they're just looking for something to complain about. But who's complaining? Fans? Bucks wire? I mean, I haven't heard anything from coaches saying anything all, about all it. All I see is Bucks wire on here. I don't see I any, haven't heard it any, doesn't it doesn't I, list anybody in particular complaining about it. Right. And I haven't heard any player say, Man, we'd be eleven and whatever right now if you know he wouldn't change the plays all the damn time. You know, we never pre we never play how we practice. You know, nobody's doing that. You know, I consider. I just think it's smoke and mirrors because I think it's possibly the coaching staff slash front office maybe putting some smoke out there because Brady's going to be a free agent this year at the end of the year if he chooses to come back. You know, I, I, that's just what I think. I'm not. 
It doesn't bother me either way. I, I don't think it's a bad thing that he's doing it. Low key, I kind of wish Derek Carr would have just changed some plays. <laughs> we might have a different record. You know, I'm not I'm not saying he should be like, fuck Josh McDaniels. He wouldn't. He's a good Christian kid. I like him. He'd be like, forget Josh McDaniels. <laughs> to heck with Josh McDaniels. Oh, shucks. We're not going to run that play. Well, I'm glad that you transcended into that game, so we'll just move right along down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ups and downs of the AFC West. So you want to start with the ups feel? or do you want to start with the downs? Well, I'm going to interview you for a second. How does it feel to be a Raiders fan and have a quarterback, an opposing quarterback, beat you doing something that has never been done ever? Well, I already knew our defense was trash. I knew when they made it 16 to 10, they were going to win the game. I knew that because we hadn't scored at all in the second half. We gave them the ball right back with a minute and 50 seconds left, no timeouts, and they had to go 98 yards. Baker Mayfield right. trots off the field, trots onto the field. Yeah, I can do this. I've paid my progressive premium. <laughs> nah, you guys self-destructed in that last drive. Them two penalties that you got were retarded. Yes, they they were, and and the holding penalty, I I I could almost excuse because those happened almost on every play. But after Crosby smashes him, old dude just knocks the ball out of his hand for unsportsmanlike conduct. I mean, what was that, that about? Like, that's why inexcusable. Do that? That's right. inexcusable. And and this is the mo of the Raiders. Even last year when they actually made the playoffs. The, the thing was, they couldn't get out of their own way. And it's more of that. And until Raiders, McDaniels Raiders. cleans that up, um, it, it, and we just got through beating the Chargers the week before and got right back in this thing. And you can't tell me the Chargers are bad because they set up there and just knocked off Miami uh, on Monday night. But that's a whole different story because I don't think Miami is what we thought they were. Sure they are. They're just as good as we thought they are. They're just as bad. I mean, this particular week in general, all across the NFL, it you could see the – what's the word that they use about how even everybody is? Oh, parody? Yes. The parody in the, in the NFL this week. I mean, Houston damn near beat Dallas. That, that have been was a game. trippy, yeah. That shouldn't have been a game. The way the Raiders lost. Uh, the way uh, the, the Chiefs Lions. almost lost. The Lions the knocked Lions off the Vikings. The Lions walked, you know, the Vikings, exactly. Um, Seattle lost. Yeah. Um, yeah, Denver almost came back and made a game of that. That, that shouldn't have been that close. So Denver didn't almost make a game out of it. They made a game out of well, it. Yeah. It was 27 to 21. Th that's true. But, you know, Russell Wilson decides, oh, hey, we're we're going to, you know, pretend to be a good team here with three games left in the season. Sure. The same thing that – are we done talking about the Raiders before we – Yeah, I, I've had my heart I mean, attack. Are you, are you already done? Are you um, okay? I'm okay. I mean – Do you still think you're going to make the playoffs? No, I do not. So this, this was our window of just, opportunity. Are you just saying that this week, or have you actually swallowed that pill? I mean, if you if you listen to the uh, announcers, there's only one way with an eight eight losses they can make the playoffs. One, they've got to win out. They're not beating the Niners. They're not beating the Chiefs. So that ninth loss is coming. They could beat the Chiefs. They could. Because that's the last game. Of okay, the week. let's say they do both of those things. Let's say they miraculously do both of those things. The Patriots still have to lose two of the three remaining games. Have Not you lost to the Patriots? We play them this week, Sunday. Okay, so you play them this week, and let's say you win, that would put you at what? Well, we're um, we have eight losses and six wins, so I'll put you at. Seven so and put eight. You and the Patriots both 
No, Patriots would be seven. Patriots and will seven. still be a game up. They've still got to lose another game. They'd be seven and seven. Yeah, and they'd so have you to guys lose are another... six and eight now. Yeah. No, we're five and eight. We're five and eight. We're five and eight. Because this is this was week thirteen. Y'all only won five games. I believe so. Well, no, we have to be six and eight, wouldn't we? Because it's week thirteen. Are you uh, six and seven? This is. We're coming up on week four, 15. You have your bye. Yeah, I mean, I'm a we're, coming up, we're coming up on week 14, aren't we? No, nah, week 15. 15, 16, 17. That's right. There are only three more games left. So, yeah, if there's, they play 15 games. There's four games left. There's four games left. Who am 15, I missing? 15, 16, then? 17, 18. Okay, who am I missing then? Because we. We play the Chiefs. We play the Niners. We play the you Patriots. You guys are five and eight. I just looked up your record. You are five and eight. Okay, that's right. Because we only had two wins before that three-game win streak. And the Patriots, the Jets, and the Chargers are all seven and six. They all literally have to lose two games. We have to win out. We own the tiebreaker over the – no, we don't even own the tiebreaker over the Chargers. Well, what's your we record? we split with them. You would actually beat them in conference. Yeah, we, we beat the Broncos twice. If we nah, beat the Chiefs – You're one You're one and three. They're two and two. In conference? In conference. No. Hold on. No, no we, we beat on. the Broncos twice. We should be we should be three and one in conference. No, we're three and two. We're three and two. The Chiefs beat this and the Chargers. Conference says Okay, so division. Sorry. Division, okay. I'm sorry, yeah. Division. Three because I'm looking at conference and con it says conference, you're four and five. Okay, you yeah, know, no. In the division, yes, you are three and two. The Chargers are two and three. Okay, so Denver yeah. Denver is 0-4. So if you guys were to tie with the Chargers, you would have the tiebreaker. However, you're going to need New England, New York. And Los Angeles to lose two games. Well, no, you could. Yeah, because to be tied. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that, those are hella odds. That's why I say no. So, yeah. We, I mean, we I got to agree with you. you. You're probably not going to. We need to be looking towards defensive players in the draft. Not high-priced free agents that are going to come here and not do anything. Well, these are the teams that they say that are ahead of you right now. You only have three teams you got to worry about. The right now, the Chargers are the eighth seed, the Jets are the ninth seed, the Jaguars are the tenth seed, and the Raiders are the eleventh seed. The Browns, Steelers, and Colts are behind you guys at 12, 13, and 14. That's who the fourth game is. Colts? Steelers. 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 Gotcha. So basically we kind of almost control our own destiny. But we need a lot of other shit to happen. So yeah. But the Jaguars beat beat up on Tennessee. So yeah, you guys got a tough it's you're not mathematically eliminated. But it is you are yes. You, you're yes. It's a tough yeah. one for you. So going to the Chiefs, um same thing I talked with another Chiefs buddy of mine. Uh the exact same thing that we love about Patrick Mahomes, I also hate about Patrick Mahomes because he thinks he can throw the ball anywhere. Those circus passes? Yeah, I mean, but not even that. Like, Now, granted, the, the linebacker for Denver made two really great interceptions, but they were bad throws. And then Sertan, you know, got his hand underneath it. Good play on him, but he should have never threw that ball. Should throw those stuffs away. But because 
he was able to complete that no look flippity doo dah pass to McKinnon at the very beginning of the game. He tends to think that he can make um, these throws, and you know, it just kind of goes with the territory. You know, he can do so many good things, but he can also hurt you because he thinks he can fit the ball anywhere. I wish he would be more Joe Burrow like, <laughs> honestly. You know, Joe Burrow has the same intangibles, runs like, you know, they kind of spit in mirror image, except Burrow protects the ball. Now, Burrow Oxford has better receivers, too, but still. Yeah, I mean, you know. <clears throat> and I know, I, I know that that hurt for you to say that, you know, that Joe Burrow. I mean, no, not really. The truth, the truth doesn't hurt, you know, when it's. But I will go on this. Because I want to put this out there before it becomes a big deal. Because I know a few weeks ago we were going to readdress our Super Bowl picks. And you picked Buffalo and who? God, I'd have to I'd I'd literally have to look at the show from that 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 week. Um it wasn't Buffalo and Tampa Bay. I know that. Well, I picked Kansas City and Tampa Bay. Those were my picks. Maybe it was Buffalo and Tampa Bay. I had to check. But now but it's looking like Buffalo I'm and Philadelphia. I'm changing it. It's going to be Cincinnati and Philadelphia. Really? I'm going Buffalo, Philadelphia. And the only reason I said that, and the Chiefs, they're going to lose to either Buffalo or Cincinnati in the playoffs because our tackle and defensive end plays. So our left and right offensive tackles and our defensive ends suck. And until Veach... Gets those corrected, we're not going to win another championship. I think you're going to end up, because of the seeding, Cincinnati's going to have to come back to Arrowhead. They're going to lose, but the AFC championship game will be in Buffalo. And you're going to lose that one. That's the one you're going to lose. Because this is. We're going to lose. We're going to lose to either one of those teams when we play them. And God forbid if Miami keeps losing. And we keep the number two seed and the Dolphins fall to the number seven seed. Mm. Tyreek Hill's coming into Arrowhead in the wild. That's weekend, right. Because and going uh, to Molly Wapas. Now that we have the 17 game schedule, there's only one bye week per conference. Right. Right. So two plays number seven. So right now, if, if right now, if the playoffs started, the Chiefs would be playing the Patriots. And Boy, the Dolphins, I've. The Dolphins would be at the Ravens and the Bengals would be at the Titans. I would love that to be Chiefs Raiders game. Even knowing what would happen just to make the playoffs again, just to say, hey, we made the playoffs two years in a row. Something to build on. Because this this franchise needs some kind of hope for the future. They really the quarterback. Do. It's not the quarterback. It's not, I don't blame the offense for any of any of these recent Dude. losses. Dude, okay. What'd you say? You don't blame what? I don't blame them 100% for these recent lo uh, losses. Well, well, no, I, I don't I don't blame Patrick Mahomes for 100% for any of the losses we had. I mean, it's an entire football game. However, the decisions that he makes contributed to those losses. So what was that pass into the end zone that got intercepted by Carr? What was up, what was up with that? That was that worse than a Mahomes pass. You know, it was, but if you do enough work to get a double-digit lead on somebody, you still have no excuse to lose that, this many double-digit games. I understand one or two teams coming back on you from double-digit, but what if we had four or five now? But At how least did four. they come back in those games? Our defense lets them back in. No, not only that, the offense doesn't do their job to keep the other guys off the field. It's it's a two-way street. Yes, when the offensive come back on, your defense gave up the points. It's it's kind of I'll just use the Chiefs as an example. We're up 27 to nothing. Patrick Mahomes makes a bad play, they intercept the ball. Yes, it's a short field, but the defense gave up that touchdown. We do it again. The defense gave up that touchdown. Went to halftime. The defense gave up that touchdown. This 27 to 21 before we blinked. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, but True. it's it's True. it's a two way street. You know what I'm saying? So if we would have lost that game, Mahomes would have got the majority of that blame. And I agree with you, but remember, like but I the said, fact, but the difference <clears throat> is, is that Mahomes was able to do just enough to score again. Yeah. To yeah. stop that, you know, kind of put a plug in the dam, so to speak. That's true. That's true. You, you want to? I, I just, I just wish, it? I just wish our. I just got one more thing to say about the Raiders. I just wish our our number twenty ninth ranked defense was just ranked number seventeenth or eighteenth. Get two of those wins back. That's all I ask. I get that. Score predictions. You got Kansas City winning their game or losing their game? Who do they Houston? play? Yeah. Oh, that should be an easy win. Man, remember when I said last week the Chiefs were going to beat the Dolphins forty two to three. I mean the Broncos forty two to three. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, we should. I mean, we're in Houston. We should win. Uh, but I think we should beat Houston. But, but in your defense, who knew? That's a team that struggled to score a touchdown in a game, let True, alone. But seven. I should have knew. I should have knew better when because you know, Mahomes is ten and zero now against Denver. Never he Denver's never beaten Patrick Mahomes. And he's 14 or 15 and 0 in the division on the road. He's undefeated on the road against the division. So eventually, you know, that, that balloon's going to burst. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of, I mean, yeah, I, who knew, but yeah. So I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant this week. We should beat Houston. Yeah, because thinking about it, they did give the Cowboys a little bit of run for their money. True, but they always come. They get they get up for Dallas because they're the baby brother in Texas. So that's true. They they've always played Dallas tough. Um, you were putting it nicely, saying the baby brother. I was gonna say they were the bastard child. Same same difference. Uh, but even when they were the Oilers, it was the same thing. Um, yeah. You said your score prediction. I do. Oh, you don't have to give me a score. I just want to win loss. I um, do twenty eight to thirteen. Wow. Um, I think Kansas City is going to score more than that. I'm going to go thirty four seventeen. That's fair. I'll take it. Um, the Raiders and the Patriots. This was the Sunday night game. Was it the Sunday night game? I think it still is the Sunday night. I need. I'm looking for you. Yeah, because because they were supposed to have three primetime games in a row, and we got duped out of our primetime game. Yeah, um, the Sunday night game right now is the Giants at the Commanders. Okay, when do the Raiders? You play guys then? play at three o five. Three o five. Okay, I think it did get moved. It got flexed out. Patriots at the Raiders. Because it's in Vegas and there's a lot of shit at stake, we're going to win, but it's going to be a barely one win. Uh, I, I'm going to say 17-14. Um, I'm going to say it. I, Josh Jacobs is still the man. He's going to run all over him to keep the ball out of New England's hands. But it's going to take a late Devontae Adams touchdown to put us up to win it. So why didn't the Raiders, why didn't Josh Jacobs have a really good night against the Rams? That defensive line held him in check. I mean, he had 90-something yards rushing. He ain't close to 100, but they, right, but they held him in check. defensive line, you, you weren't playing against their starters. Their interior defensive line are both hurt. The Rams were. They got up for the game, though. I'll say this, though. Josh Jacobs is still the, the rushing leader in the NFL. Yeah, he's he's a beast this year. He's about to get uh, paid. Whether it's by us or somebody else, he's about to get paid. Well, he would look good in a Chiefs uniform. I digress. Um, <laughs> I would probably say – We'll take I'm, Pacheco, I'm, then. We'll no, take we'll, Pacheco. We'll keep, him. we'll keep Pacheco. Oh, Lord. You can have CEH. The rich get richer. I don't want Edward Tiller. Uh -uh. We'll give you CEH nah. and Ro Rojo. You can have those two. Nah, we're good. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, who am I gonna give you? I will give you 
our left tackle for Devonte Adams. Okay. Oh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> never. <laughs> never say never. Um, Patriots. I'm gonna pick the Patriots to win this game. And twenty-one to sixteen. Okay. I can't. I can't argue that because. That that that's the Raiders Ibo right there. So we'll see which Raider team shows up. I will say this the Raiders will be up 16 to nothing. The Patriots will score 21 unanswered. I can see that too, because again, <laughs> that's their MO. Uh and, next and, game and, is and that's one where you can't put it on the offense or the defense. That's the coaching staff. You have to adjust. It's not the coaching staff, it's everybody. You can't just pin it on one person. Like I'm not pinning, I'm not pinning your guys' losses on Derek Carr. I'm pinning his play as a huge contributing factor. Yes, coaches, huge contributing factor, but the coaches don't execute the plays. True. I'm I'm just trying to blame everybody I can till this shit turns around. You, you what you need to do is is stop. Okay, there was a point in Tina Turner and Ike Turner's relationship where she got tired of getting her ass whooped, okay? <laughs> you need to to stop all the Derek Carr love and find a quarterback. I'm just saying. If you guys had a top 10, top 15 quarterback, I know we already talked about this, but y'all would be very tough to beat. We already have talked about this. Yeah, you're right. Derek Carr is a top 10 quarterback if you just look at he's, stats. He's really not. He's, he's a stat builder. He's really not. And remember when I compared Baker Mayfield to Derek Carr and you were like, no. Baker Mayfield's got yeah, scoreboard on him. That came back to bite me, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, next game, I, I'm, I'm going to take you off. I'm going to remove the hook from your lips there so you can move on and you can start to heal. Appreciate it. I love Appreciate you, brother. It. Put you on my prayer list. Uh, <laughs> Cardinals at the Broncos. Now, Kyler Murray, I, I believe, is out for the year. Torn ACL. He's done. Um. Wow, this is tough because Denver showed some sack last week. But I uh, don't know if But Russell I don't think they Wilson showed enough sack. Playing. I don't know if Russell Wilson will be playing because he's in concussion protocol. Okay, so this could be the backup bowl. Um McCown versus Rippon. I forgot Rippon was still in the league too. Um, Cardinals. I'm it's I'm gonna have Denver. to. Go. I'm still going with the Cardinals. Yeah, um, I'll probably go with the Broncos. I'm just gonna pick the Broncos because of their defense. Now, what did you say in our preseason predictions on what you thought the uh, record was gonna be for them? Five and 13. How many wins do they have? Three. Okay, so you can afford to give them two more wins out of the next yeah. four games. Yeah, I can. <laughs> and then we've got Tennessee Titans, seven and six, battling the Chargers, seven and six, in Los Angeles. The Chargers have not shown me that they can stop the run. Tennessee specializes in running the ball. I'm going Tennessee, but it's going to be a close one. I'm going to say 27-24, Tennessee, late field goal to break the tie. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to change that prediction just because I want to throw some stuff at you just to see if, if it changes your mind. Okay. So, yes, Tennessee uh, is very well at running the ball, except against Jacksonville because Jacksonville completely – Dead leg. For dead whatever leg. reason, yeah. Right. Now, the Chargers are finally getting healthy. And a healthy Chargers is a scary team. Just, A.K. watch what happened Sunday night versus the Dolphins. You're right. They did knock now, off the Dolphins. So, Dolphins, Tennessee, in your mind, who has the better defense? Dolphins. Dolphins. Okay. Now, obviously, Tennessee runs the ball better than the Dolphins. I would almost say that Tennessee has a better quarterback than the Dolphins. Almost. You know what? I would almost say that. 
You know what? I, I'm I am gonna flip it. Here's the thing: the run game does you no good if you're playing from behind. That's where I was trying to lead you to. See, so it's still going to be 27-24, Chargers. Yeah, I'm I'm going to pick the Chargers as well. Um. I think this is a uh, this is going to be a playoff type game because they're both seven and six. I want to. I think Tennessee is leading that division. I'm looking real quick. Give me just a second. Really, they're seven and six and leading the division. Yeah, that division sucks. Yeah, how can yeah. we get into that division? Yeah, <laughs> seven and six, and they're number one in their division. Jacksonville's five and eight. So Jacksonville has the same record as the Raiders right now. Mm, mm, mm. So let's say Jacksonville wins, Tennessee loses. That put Tennessee at seven and seven, and Jacksonville at six and eight. You know, with I don't know if they play each other again. Who does Jacksonville got this week? I'm looking here. Oh, okay. Uh, do 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 Jackson. Ooh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I erase anything that I just said about that because Dallas is going into Jacksonville. Mm, okay, never mind. All right. I still think the Chargers are going to win, and if the Patriots were to lose to the Raiders, Chargers would be back in that number seven spot. So oh. let's go, Patriots. <sighs> uh, yeah, that's a bitter pill to swallow because I don't want to see the Chargers get in, but I don't want to ruin my playoff chances. I'd rather get down to the last day and needing 21 different things to happen and none of them do. At least I can say I was close than to have the Chargers, you know, get in. I mean, well, who did uh... – do a quick fill. I'm gonna just jump and see who the who the Chargers have for the rest of the year. Yeah, because if they got a clear path, they might get that seventh seed and not give it up. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, if the Patriots and them stay tied, Patriots have the tiebreaker. But let me see here. So. The Chargers just played the Dolphins. Oh. There. Tennessee at Indianapolis. Home against the Rams and then at the Broncos. Man. They may not lose again. They may not. It's a bitter pill to swallow. They may not lose again. I'm a quick and But hey. Go ahead and be that seventh seed and have to go to Kansas City. I'm good with that. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. They play us too good. I'm trying to, I'm jumping here to see who the Patriots have for the rest of the year. <clears throat> so the Patriots have you guys, and then. Wow. <laughs> Patriots have a murderer's row. They're at the Raiders, then home against the Bengals, home against the Dolphins, and then at Buffalo. Well, at least I know that team is going to end up with two losses, whether it be us or somebody else. Right? Man. So, yeah. Well, you, I guess we better you start might as well write the Chargers, Chargers in. Yeah, might as well. What do the Jets have since you got that up? Because that's the, the other team. Jets. Do, 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 schedule. Come on. All right. Who? What? We're week 15, right? Yeah. So the Jets played Detroit this week. I'm going to say New that's York, an L. In New York. And then play Jacksonville in New York and go to Seattle and then finish the year at Miami. I see two losses out of those four games. I wouldn't automatically pencil Detroit as a win. Oh, you're right. Miami's a loss. 
Well, it's the last week of this season, so it depends. Are they going to play everybody? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point. So, but it is a division rival, too. True. True that. Definitely a lot of football left to be played. And, uh, you know, before we close it out, there was one more thing that hurt me in football um, this week. My fantasy football league. I'm riding a three-game win streak. I was ranked number five, and six teams can go to the playoffs. I'm I'm ranked number five, and I won big time this past week. I look today, I'm now ranked number six. And I'm like, how the hell did that happen? I won, and I fell in the rankings. Apparently, a couple of the other guys that uh, got wins, they beat me head to head so that's what put one of them above me gotcha y'all have the same record yeah that hurt because now i've got zero margin of error during this last week of our league i've got to win and is this the if, final week of the league yes because our playoffs start next week are you are you nfl.com fantasy yeah. football mm -hmm. okay so me too I'm ranked number two in my league. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to fall. You're guaranteed a playoff spot. And the top, I'm nine and five, and the top is 10 and four. So we're real close. Yeah. The problem is, I play the number three ranked person, and he is a returning champion. So just like the Raiders, I need a lot of things to happen. <laughs> a, a lot of things to happen. How many Raiders do you have on your squad? Only have Josh Jacobs and uh, Daniel Carlson. Who's I'm Daniel smarter Carlson? than that. The field goal kicker. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that I know is going to score points. You know, a couple weeks ago, I got 48 points for Josh Jacobs. Yeah, he had one hell of a week that week. Yeah, so, you know, I I'm, I'm good. Um you know, at first it was a tough decision. Do I pick him up? Because I had Alvin Kamara. So glad I picked up Josh Jacobs. Alvin Kamara has only given me one double-digit point a uh, week this entire year. Just a bust. Yeah. And the only reason why I played him a couple times because a couple of my other running backs were on bye weeks. So, Yeah, I was able to snag uh... – Who's that rookie wide receiver for the Packers that's had really good weeks the last three weeks? I don't know his name, but he's balling. Watson. Watson, I think, is his last name. Mm. I was able to snag him up off of waivers, and he's what helped me win the last couple. He was on a bye last week, so I'm looking your, forward uh, to getting his butt back in the lineup. Who's your quarterback? Mahomes. Mm. How'd you manage to pick him up in the draft? I believe I picked him first. Okay, so you had the number one pick. No, 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 no. I had like the number seven pick, but everybody else he, picked running backs first. He last that's that's stupid. Everybody picks running backs. I mean, that's they go to the old school pick all your running backs first. I was like, no. The two major running backs were off the board that I wanted. And I was like, Psh, let me go ahead and snag this dude. I got him and then my next I got him as my number one and Bradley Chubb. Or Chubb from Cleveland as my first two picks. Hmm. Yeah, I got uh, Josh Allen as my uh, QB. That's pretty good still. Yeah, I mean, he, get him? Uh, I picked him up uh, in the first round. I had the – I want to say I had the number three pick. And um, he was there, and I guess a lot of the guys thought that I was going to get Devontae Adams. Shit. No, Josh Allen. Yeah, I Devontae him. would if Devontae would have been there and picked number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing myself because I wish I'd have grabbed Tyreek. Who knew? But really, the guy, who knew? Right. But the guy before me drafted him right before I was getting ready to draft him. I mean, if Tua was any kind of quarterback before this year, yeah, everybody would be thinking about that. But who knew? True. Because we, we all figured, you know, Tua was, you know, 
going to miss those throws or they would be well, too he short. he's missing them now. Well, he's under duress more, too. I know, but that's all you got to do is put a little pressure on him. And, I mean, the last two weeks against the Niners and the Chargers, he's not accurate. He's not accurate. No. Which was the knock on him in the first place. So, he's well, living course, up to expectations. Not according to Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill said he's the most accurate quarterback in the league. Do you know why Tyreek Hill saying that? Tyreek well, got the said, bag. He said that before he ever caught one pass in a game from him. He didn't have to catch passes. He caught that check. Yeah. <laughs> have you do you watch do you watch ever watch Club Shay Shay's podcast show? Yes. Shannon Sharp, did you see the one yep. where he interviewed Tyreek Hill this week? Yeah, and I have a problem with Tyreek Hill. He's not a rock star. Take the glasses off, Reed. Take the dark glasses off in the dimly lit room. I'm going to tell you, a lot of my Chiefs friends hate Tony Gonzalez with a passion because of the way he ended his career and the way he talked about Kansas City at the end. I am starting to put Tyreek Hill in that category. I cannot stand that dude. Like, I... I Forgive me, Father, but I pray he pulls an ACL every time he plays. I'm telling you. the He's just so derogatory when it comes to the Chiefs organization. Just because instead of getting... Oh, but they would of, utilize his full skill set. Bull crap. He, he has a skill set because of Kansas City. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, but he said he didn't want to take our $25 million that we gave him, but he took the 30 from Miami. It's all about the money, period. $5 million. $5 million and your chance to always be in the Super Bowl hunt. Remember Gordon Gecko from Wall Street. Greed is good. That's yep, all that's it is. That's what they say. Yep, and then he went to prison. Just saying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> On that note, we're going to close <laughs> it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. We got lots more coming. Uh, big show once again. Awesome. Everybody, right, like, share, subscribe. Take us on out of here. Love each other. Give everybody and your family a hug. Tomorrow's not promise. Love you guys. See you next Amen. week. See ya.